here we have our synchronous counter with the power load capability. We want to be able to load a specific value into our counter whenever we want. Uh, for that, we the design has changed slightly, let's say, by introducing this multiplexer-like piece of circuit at the input of each flip-flop. So with these pieces, with these uh, two AND gates and one OR gate, we determine what to provide as the input to, the, to each flip-flop. To, you, you can see here is that we will have two inputs and we will select among those two, two inputs. How do we select? We refer to the load signal that we have here. Let me show it to you. So here we have the load. When load is equal to 1, let's check it together in it. Let's see what happens when load is equal to 1. If load is equal to 1, we will have 1 here and 0 here. The output of this AND gate will be equal to 0. 1 will be available here. We will have 0 here. And therefore, you can see that uh, 1 is here and then the output of the first AND gate will be equal to D0. Here we'll have D1, D2 and D3. For the second AND gate for each stage, we, will, we, we can see that one input is equal to 0. Therefore, its output will be equal to 0. And therefore, the output of the OR gates, which are the input to our flip-flops, will be also D0. D1, D2, and D3. So what do you see here? When load is equal to 1, at the next rising edge of the clock, counter will be loaded. Counter will be loaded. Okay, so whatever value you want, you can load into the counter by specifying them in the form of D0, D1, D2, and D3. Now we can check the case when load is equal to zero. And you can, uh, before moving forward, you can see here that when load is equal to one, the value of count doesn't matter. Whether it's one or zero, the output of the AND gate that we have here, over here, you can see that since one input which comes from the load is equal to zero, output is equal to zero. So in this case, count input is not important. It could be either 0 or 1. But when load is equal to 0, then we can see what happens in terms of the value that we have for the count. Let's consider two cases. When load is equal to 0 and count is also equal to 0. Let us see what we have as the input and outputs of of our gates and finally for the flip flops so load is equal to zero and count is equal to zero here we will have zero the output of this not gate is equal to one that one will appear here count is equal to zero the output of this and gate will be equal to zero and then the output of the next AND gates here will be also equal to zero. If we look at the multiplexers that we have at, at the input side of the Philip Philips, we can see that one zero is available here and one is available here. The output of the first AND gates will be all equal to zero. And the output of the second AND gates will come from the multiplexers because one input is equal to one so the the result of the end will be given will be determined by the output of the XOR gate and then if we look at the XOR gate we can see that one input to the to all XORs is equal to zero all the time and the second input comes from the output of the corresponding flip flop. So one input is zero, the second input is Q0, Q1, Q2, and Q3. 
and therefore the output will be q0 q1 q2 and q3 for the xor gates and as a result we will have we will have the output of the flip flops appearing at the input of the flip flop so what do you see here when load is equal to zero and count is equal to zero counter holds its current value so it is not loaded by any value and it doesn't count it holds its current value the next case will be when load is equal to zero and count is equal to one let us see what happens in this case let me just get rid of the, all this again all right so we have load equal to zero count equal to one we have zero here count is equal to one therefore we will have one here the output of this and gate will be equal to one we have zero here and one here so the again the output of all the first and gates for each stage will be equal to zero one input to the second and gates will be equal to one and as a result their output will be the output that they get from the xors so we will have this kind of signal passing okay it means that now we can say that we don't have the multiplex so let's say and the output of the xors are directly connected to the input of the d flip flops but then what do you see here it's it's like the enable the count enable signal that we had if you compare it with the with the circuit that we had here the synchronous counter now we have the count enable equal to one so basically the counter will count up the counter will increment its content at each rising edge of the clock so basically this is the the way in which our counter our synchronous counter with parallel load will behave so with two control signals load and count we over here we have three operations to be taken holding the stored value when both of them are equal to zero counting up the stored value when load is equal to zero and count is equal to one and loading external value when load is equal to one and in this case the value of the count input will not matter